life settings, lap times, grip, g-forces, bump, rebound, data, deltas, numbers, 992 GT3 RS. This is serious. But is it fun? We'll come back to that question, but first let's recap some of the spec sheet, because this new £180,000 RS certainly looks like a quantum leap compared to its forebears. But is it? In terms of power and torque, no. It's 518 brake horsepower as a solid 142 bhp up on the original 996 of 18 years ago. But since the 997 4 litre that came out in 2010, power increases have been marginal, with this latest car only having 25 brake horsepower more than that final Metzger. In fact, with 343 pounds foot of torque, this 992 actually has 4 pounds foot less than its immediate predecessor, the 991 Gen 2 GT3 RS. But what this car has mostly focused on is making its already glorious, naturally aspirated flat 6 better able to cope with the extreme stresses it will be subjected to on track. Because with the combination of 20mm wider tyres, 30mm wider tracks and up to 860 kilos or almost 1900 pounds of downforce, this new car has a lot of grip. That downforce, which is more than a McLaren Senna at a quarter of the price, is of course thanks to its huge active rear wing, but also the centrally mounted S-duct radiator that frees up space in the front for active aero flaps. Also the aerodynamically shaped front suspension, good for 40 kilos of downforce on its own apparently. And then there are those new carbon doors that help vent air from the front arches and the rear diffuser of course. Even in its low drag DRS setting, it produces 306 kilos of downforce and Porsche says it generates as much in high speed corners as a GTE car in Le Mans trim. It won't surprise you to know that this is also the heaviest ever GT3 RS at a curb weight of 1450 kilos or a smidgen under 3200 pounds. But it might surprise you to know that it's only 75 kilos heavier than the comparatively diminutive 997 Gen 1 GT3 RS. Time to see what it's like. Silverstone is clearly a great track to demonstrate the aero on this car. You've got complexes like Maggots and Beckett's, the old Cops Corner. Should really show this off to great effect. We all have to follow a hastily driven GT3 by the way, which is actually a little distracting at times, but also quite a good reference point. Anyway, back to that question of fun. Well the first thing to say is that, obviously, this engine really is fun. I know it might not have gained a huge amount of power and actually dropped a little bit in torque, but the sound of it... See those hotter cabs above 6,000 RPM is where they really come into play. Wow! Those up changes. The sound of it is amazing. Proper race car sound that you want. So yes, the engine is definitely fun. But what about the aero? In some ways, the aero, you don't almost want to feel it or be aware of it. It just gives you more speed. And obviously speed in and of itself can be fun. Wow, the braking on this. I thought the braking on standard GT3 was good, but, and it is. But this is a whole other level. Coming back down this right here and just the stability of it and to be able to lead right into the ABS. That's also one of the areas where the arrow really helps you. Monster the curves. Stay so stable. 
it's obviously got this anti-jive geometry so that it stays flat under braking and the arrow still works. Wow, you just get on the power so early and the traction out of corners is phenomenal. And obviously you've got the response from the naturally aspirated engine. The, the traction is amazing. Love it through here, through Maggots and Beckett's. Down the hangar straight here. Push the DRS. Still as much downforce as a normal GT3 on its high downforce setting. And this RS doesn't really feel any less plush than a normal GT3 inside. Obviously, there is the roll cage behind you, but with the big glossy central screen and the digital elements on the dash, it doesn't feel like a stripped out or steer race car. There is aesthetically pleasing carbon fibre and colour coordinated stitching. You can charge into Luffield listening to a podcast if it appeals to you. But where I think this car is really fun is when you start playing with these switches down here. When you're in track mode, these four rotary switches let you tune the car to an extent and, more importantly, with an ease that I simply haven't seen from a manufacturer before. They are a gateway to geeking out. First thing you can really play with is the diff, because you can adjust that on coast and under power, so wind it off a bit to make it a bit looser, maybe on the entry to corners, certainly get turned into the tighter corners more easily and then obviously wind it up for more traction on the exit equally if it's wet then perhaps wind up the diff under coast just to make that back end even more stable give you more confidence and that's something you can feel really quickly and i think you'll appreciate the dampers well they have an adjustment range of about 20 percent and they can be tailored independently at the front and the rear and for both compression and for rebound. Let's talk a little bit more about that. I need something with half the wheels. You see, for ages now, you've been able to quickly and easily adjust both compression and rebound damping on mountain bikes, and you feel the effects straight away. It's fun to play around with. Now, at the risk of teaching my grandmother to suck eggs, compression damping, or bump, is how quickly the spring is allowed to compress, while rebound damping, perhaps fairly obviously, is how quickly that spring is then allowed to re-extend. Simple, isn't it? I should point out that this is not me in my weekend wig, but Liam, who's considerably better at mountain biking and possibly has a weaker grasp on the fragility of human mortality. Anyway, damping, at least for me, hasn't always been crystal clear. Where I think things can get a little trickier is in the semantics of adjusting damping. So let's explain it with the help of this rather lovely YT Capra, complete with fancy flight attendant suspension, matching obviously GT3 RS behind me with Weissach Pack, both German brands. It's, it's like we think about this stuff, isn't it? But you've got a plus and a minus, same as in the car. So are you adding speed? Are you adding rebound? Are you adding softness? No, the, the way to think about it is you're adding or subtracting damping. So on the top of here, you press this, you are adding the compression damping or you're taking it away. You're not adding speed, you're not subtracting speed, you're not faster and slower, don't think about it like that. Adding or subtracting damping. Same as in the car. Easy. But what does that all mean out on track? In the car, Porsche suggests that actually, well obviously you start off with everything effectively on zero and then in fact you adjust the compression and the rebound in sync with each other just to start with so the car remains balanced through its travel. After that you can start playing with it a bit more. Obviously if it's wet then you might take away some of the compression damping, make it a bit softer, give yourself a bit more traction. After that, well, it all gets a bit, a bit more of a black art. Are you a compression person or a rebound person? It's a whole other video, but to give you some idea, I did have a quick chat to Jörg Bergmeister about a very particular track and his settings for that. Yeah. 
So you're, I know you haven't set the time around the Nürburgring <laughs> yet. That's, that's to come when the weather plays ball. But you have obviously got your setup for around the Nürburgring. So I thought it would be really fun to know what you do to the car and why you do it, basically. All right. Yeah, I've obviously done plenty of laps and already plenty of laps on, on heated Cup 2 Rs. Uh, so it's a lot of fun, that's for <laughs> sure. <laughs> Pretty mind blowing, to be honest. Um, on the setup, uh, on the differential, I'm staying on 0, zero because um, that's our baseline setup and that works really well as we do most of the development work on the Nordschleife. Um, so that's quite perfect for the Nordschleife. Um, on the dampers, on a, on a Cup 2, I would stay at 0-0 zero, zero as well. Um, but then with a Cup 2R, especially when it's heated, um, I go quite a bit higher on, on rebound damping. Um, so in the front I'm plus 3 and in the rear plus 4. And it's mostly just for the, the bumps, um, like Belov S, where you really have quite big bumps to keep the control of the body um, and therefore have a bit more support. So you're basically slowing down the way it reacts exactly. when it comes yes. off the yeah. bumps. You sometimes therefore have a little bit um, yeah, air time, let's say. Uh, so the jump at Flansgarten 1 is a little longer with that, <laughs> which is fun as well. Um, yeah, but just to keep the, the body movement under control. And then for the sake of comparison, round here, what would you then set up? Um, round here, actually, it's not too different. The biggest difference is the differential. Um, quite a bit more lock here. I'm plus three on coast. Um, that's, I think, quite a big step, um, especially for the quick corners you want to support in the rear. So you can carry maximum speed in there. Uh, and also for tray braking, rear stability is obviously key. And um, I think that's the biggest difference. Um, in general, just slightly softer on, on front bump. Um, so compression a little softer uh, on the front and in the rebound, um, just one step softer. So plus two, plus three in the rear. And why would you go a bit softer on the uh, compression at the, at the um, front? The compression is the basic tendency for the track is a bit understeering here and going a little softer gives you some extra front grip. Uh, also a difference here is the tire pressure. Um, at the Notch Life we are running about 0.5 to 1 tenth uh, of delta on, on pressure front to rear and here is almost 2 tenths again of the understeer to work around that. It is fascinating. It's such. It's a whole other world that I can see. It the, is. <laughs> the forums are going to go absolutely wild with setups for different tracks. Yeah. No, it's really cool to have uh, the opportunity to really adjust the track first off to your driving style and what you like from the car, but also like the last two days we had rain. You go full soft on the compression and just gain extra grip. So it was really cool. You. Thank you so much. My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> then slightly unplanned. I jumped into a camera car for a hot lap around Silverstone with Jörg. And to be honest, well, we had to include the footage because it recalibrated my perception of the car in a way I don't think I've experienced before. Yes, this particular car was on Cup 2R tyres rather than the regular Cup 2s I'd been on, but nonetheless, well, just have a look.
Bro, that is... And as I said, the tires are really old. Yeah, well, I saw. Yeah. yeah. That is just incredible. Yes, <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> I mean, that is... I mean, breaking Brooklands is it's so crazy. And through maggots back, yeah. it's kind of sort of like yeah. the stability. And, and that, is, that, late. that is with the standard camber. So if you yeah. add some camber, yeah. it will only be quicker there. <laughs> oh, it's really... Wow. That is... So now you see why I said you need some time to really use the full potential of I, the car. Yeah, I, I, I know that, but to... That, that is, that's a whole other level to, kind of, to unlock that of that, I mean, yeah, that, it's, uh, you know, often I think with a road car, yeah, I could, I can get yeah. a lot from it and find, yeah. you, you will always take more curb and carry more speed yeah. and all that sort yeah. of thing, but that is, you know, you, I can see why you love it. <laughs> that is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, I couldn't oh. agree more. I kind of don't, I shouldn't do a film now. We should just, we'll just play that, and that's kind of like, yeah. So just don't listen to me because anything I say, this is the demonstration. Yeah, of what I mean, does. also on the Nordsch Life, you are in there, and then you're unheated, brand new Cup 2R. It's incredible, really. In the corners, oh, it's a different, it's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. Thank you. So My much. pleasure. <laughs> Glad you liked it. I sat next to Jörg in other Porsches and been able to understand the delta between us, but this was extraordinary. My scant 10 or so laps at Silverstone suddenly seemed even more inadequate. Jörg's faith in the aero was incredible, and the way he bullied the car and it took it, unbelievable. He drove it like a race car. For reference, he later did a 2 minute 8.3 second lap on fresh rubber but with a full tank, and pulled as much as 2G in the corners. That is serious stuff, particularly when you consider it's not a lap time hewn from massive power. All of which brings us back to the question at the start of this. Is it fun? And to some extent, fast is fun. So yes, it is, because it is phenomenally fast. But I think the interesting thing is that all the aero gives you that speed, but then the adjustability within the car is really, really intriguing. There's so much more to learn with it, but I think the fun thing is that it makes the car accessible for all sorts of drivers if they're just going on that journey of kind of how to set a car up or or even sort of learning to track drive actually so for example i might be learning a circuit and think well in some tighter corners i want i want that diff on coast sort of open a bit more to help me rotate the car whereas something like your bergmeister can then set the car up to get the maximum performance out of it. He might go the other way. He might, might you know, like diff up more to have more stability because he's already rotating the car. And to have that, that breadth of tunability so easily within the car is fascinating. And I think, yes, really fun. Of course, we need to drive this new RS on the road to complete the picture to see if those 50% stiffer spring rates will work outside Silverstone or Sebring. But it almost, almost doesn't matter what it's like. This is clearly and unashamedly a track tool first and foremost, albeit one with Apple CarPlay and a reversing camera. And the mere fact it can be driven on the road at all just seems crazy. Imagine seeing this parked up outside your local knowing it has the performance to back up the posturing. Madness. And yes, quite fun. <laughs>